Good morning, church family. It is good to see you this morning. As you can tell, we have something a little different planned this morning. So uh, we are excited about worship and what God has in store for us today. And I am. I hope you are as well. We do want to thank uh, those many, many of you who helped with the service for Jerry Sandvig yesterday, um, from the choir singing to those um, who helped with, in various ways getting things ready for the service and during the service, and, and those who helped with the meal for the family afterwards. We appreciate that. And in fact, um, if you brought in a dish for the, the family yesterday, we want to encourage you. There's a couple empty dishes over there, but there are also even some uh, still semi-full dishes in the refrigerator. The family had a few less show up than they were expecting. And so um, if you brought something yesterday, you might just want to check over in the chapel center during fellowship time, and uh, we can help you find your, your dish at that point in time. So, And then we want to let you know, I need to let you know about a error in the bulletin. The Chosen Season 2 um, viewing group will start this Tuesday, but it says on the screen and your bulletin, 1.30, that's actually supposed to be 1 o'clock. So 1 o'clock on Tuesday. And if you would like more information, you can see Steve and Lily, and you can also sign up in the entryway if you haven't already. Um, that will be at the church office on Tuesday at 1 o'clock. And then this Friday... At 3 p.m. right here in the chapel, we will be having a celebration of life service for Arlene Kremer. And so we want to encourage you um, to come as we celebrate Arlene's life and just as we reach out and support and encourage John and Connie uh, during this time of grief in their life. So that will be Friday at 3 o'clock. With that, let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. God, we thank you so much that you are here for us. In times of mourning, you are our comfort. In times of grief, you can sustain us, Lord. And in times of rejoicing, we know that you are there for us. And we can remember your faithfulness in all of life's walk, God. And we thank you so much for that. We thank you that you are in our midst, in good times and bad, as we gather together, Lord. And we just ask that you would would help us appreciate you being in our midst today, that we would receive a fresh word from you, Lord, as we sing praises to you this morning. We thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, choir and Linda, for leading us. I'm going to ask that you join me in our responsive reading this morning. This is what the Lord says. He who created you, fear not, for I have redeemed you, and I have summoned you by name. 
When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. I am the Lord your God, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. May Lord God bless the reading of his word. see you all this morning. We stopped abruptly. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's stand and sing Like a River Glorious.
God, we hope that that will be your song today. No matter what the tragedy, no matter what the fear, no matter how high the waves get or how dark the night seems, because of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, it is well. It can be well. And it will be well with your soul. I'm going to ask that our ushers come forward. We're going to receive this morning's offering. Linda and choir, what an amazing job. Man, what an amazing job. You can be seated. I was going to pray, but y'all go ahead and sit down now. I'm going to pray and then we're going to continue into worship. Father, we thank you today for what we're about to receive. We're going to praise you for it in a moment, but at first we come before your throne and we thank you in advance for how you will use it, how you will multiply it. And Father, not in a selfish or self-serving way, but how you're going to bless the giver. Lord, we thank you for the small role you give us in reaching this world with the grace, the love, and the mercy of Jesus Christ. So again, Father, we thank you in advance. Through the power of the Holy Spirit in your Son's precious name, amen.
let's stand and sing the doxology together. Things, Linda, you just probably know best not to mess up, and the way worship's gone so far, I didn't want to get in the way anymore. I was l looking up earlier, um, in the early 2000s, I may have the dates wrong, I had the privilege of meeting uh, a youth pastor, a fellow youth pastor. I was working doing student ministry for the Southern Baptist Convention and, and had heard this guy on the radio, heard him sing, but also was told through a mutual friend, the guy can sing great, but you have no idea what a great communicator he is. And we were preparing a youth camp for about 1,800 students, and I reached out, a guy named Chris Rice out of California, and we were going to be in Southern California, and I reached out. <clears throat> And said, hey, would, and it was, I was reaching out, reaching out very late. For a lot of these guys, if you're not 36 months in advance, you're, forget it. But I reached out, and ironically, he didn't like send a hard letter back through one of his handlers or something else or a secretary. I get a personal phone call. I pick up the phone, and he says, hey, is this Mitch? I said, yeah. He said, Mitch, this is Chris. Now, I not communicating for a week and a half. I have no idea who Chris is, all right? I said, hey, Chris, how you doing? Because you want to try to, you know, recoup, talk enough, and I'll figure out who this is. After he spoke for a second, he said, you have no idea who I am, do you? <laughs> I said, no, I don't. And he said, I'm Chris Rice, and you uh, jed some information to me. And, man, I would love nothing more than to be a part of that youth camp. He said, but I need to understand what my role is. And I said, well, man, Chris, we're going to have 18 to 1,800 to 2,000 students there. Would you come and preach? And, and, you know, and if you want to mix some of your music in with it, and I'm trying to, you know, paint this glossy picture. And he said, you know, what I'd really like to do is just come hang out. And here's how humble this guy was. He said, I, you can find somebody else better to preach than me, I guarantee you. And someone way better than to do music. He said, but if you would allow me just to come hang out with the students, is that cool? And I don't, because you don't often deal with guys that humble in that role, you're like, I don't even know if I'm being set up or not. And I said, well, Chris, and then I said this, Chris, can I call you that? He said, well, yeah, I think that's what I told you, what my name was, so. And I was sold already, and I said, would you prayerfully consider coming and serving as camp pastor? And if you want to mix music in, you're more than welcome to. He said, well, I would, but I don't know, man. It just, I think there's got to be somebody better. No, I'm sold. Because you never in those roles meet someone that humble. And so he said, I'd love to. I'll move my schedule around. And then, so now we get down to brass tacks, and I really want you to understand the heart of this guy. Because it's nothing 
when you get into that realm of planning camps or youth events or even adult events to have what they call a rider. And the rider is the black witch that sneaks in. You know, a speaker will say, I can come and do that, that's fine. But my people will contact you with a rider. And the rider essentially is this. We require a back room that's air conditioned to 72 degrees all the time. And it needs to have Georgia peaches and Perrier water. And you think I'm joking right now, but I'm not. I mean, it's like the most ridiculous thing in the world. And on top of that is their fees. So we're talking, talking, talking. And I said, well, Chris, who will I contact for your writer? And he said, yeah, I don't have one. He said, a lot of people ask me about that, but I don't know. And I said, well, what are your requirements? And he said, it, is there going to be a place for me to stay or should I get my own hotel? I said, oh, no, you can stay here on the campus at Point Loma. And he said, well, don't get me a room. Is there an extra bed in your place? I'll just stay with you. And you're like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, Chris, how much will the week cost us? And he said, you know, God takes really good care of me. Don't worry about it. And I'm like, there's no way in the world this guy's real. There, I'm holding the phone looking at like, there's... This is a prank call right now. Long, long, long story short, he shows up that week at camp. And, and just was one of the most anointed people by the Holy Spirit that I may have ever met. Humble youth pastor, loved young people. And about Four or five months prior to that, we were, we were sitting. In fact, there was no green room re required. He said, I don't want to sit backstage when I can sit out with the students prior to worship. He said, why would I do that? I don't know, man. I guess you were a prima donna. I don't know. And we were sitting out waiting on the students to come in. And he said, Mitch, he said, you know, I, I wrote this song a while back. And... Uh, I've, I've really not done it much in public. I've done a couple of times with my youth group. But beyond that, I've not really done it that much. Do you, would you mind if I did it? I said, man, I would love for you to do it. The song, and I'm not going to go through all the lyrics of the song. We just honestly don't have time today. But the title of the song, and for those of you that do skim the internet and look for stuff, his name is Chris Rice, basic spelling with a C. And the lyrics he wrote to a song is called Cry to Jesus. And it starts out by saying this, weak and wounded sinner, lost and left to die. Oh, raise your head, for love is passing by. Cry to Jesus. Steve and some others, and Linda and Tracy and I have been working on today's message. The, the, and I say message, let me back up. Uh, we don't work on messages as much as we try to work on the opportunity for those of you that come to have an encounter with God each and every week. And if we miss it, I own that, not them. That's, that falls on Mitch's back. But we work so diligently to do that. And this week has been a very unique week. And God bringing that story to mind was a God thing. Because I don't know when the last time was I thought about Chris. Months, if not years. But isn't it interesting that in that very first line, weak and wounded sinner. Now, you may not feel like you're in that ballpark or in that bowl, but guess what? I hate to break this to you this morning. You're in it. <laughs> we all are. We all fit in that bowl. And today we're going to hear from two couples, four individuals that we just kind of randomly picked. We could have picked from multiple others because they really identify some folks 
that have really, now, I, I don't know how else to say this, so if the vernacular offends you, forgive me. But, but God has allowed them to walk through almost everything hell has to toss upon them. And they've not lost sight of Jesus. And I wish I could say, I wish I could stand as your pastor and say, I'm that strong. That's me. I think at the end of the day, God knows I'm pretty much a spiritual wimp. And he protects me and keeps me so safe and so protected. But when we look at the news, we look at all the craziness going on. When we consider this morning's passage, I guess if you want to put a title on it, you can see what's written up there, good news in a world gone bad. And oh, how we need it. Please keep that passage right there, Lori, if you don't mind, just please freeze that there. I, Tracy was helping me do some research. And I asked her, Tracy, will you please look and see if you can find a conglomeration for us in the Sun Lakes area, what perhaps the 10 top uh, news stories that are trending on social media or the newspaper or the internet, what those 10 might be. And I don't, I mean, she went through hundreds and, and she found 10 that I think really kind of capsulate where we're at. We can talk about the Russian bombing of a school. And that school was sheltering 400 Ukrainian children and adults. We could also talk about the over 10 million that have fled their homes in the Ukraine. We could talk about the five dozen are the five that were killed and the dozen that were missing in that fiery accident in Bangladesh. Maybe if you read a page or two into the newspaper, you notice where that, that Chinese person who shared Ukraine videos and what was going on in the Ukraine was automatically identified as a national traitor. And if you keep up with Chinese politics, we'll probably never see that person again. Maybe you have ties to Texas and you were drawn to the wildfires that destroyed over 86 homes, I believe, and almost wiped out, decimated an entire small town in Texas this week. There was the Arkansas article where one was killed and 24 wounded when someone took out a gun and just randomly began shooting this week. The judge that held a church, or not a church, I'm sorry, a judge that held a county clerk in violation and filed charges because he would not write, he would not offer a marriage license to a same-sex couple, in fact, refusing their marriage license, and the judge came back and found that person in contempt. Maybe in the local news, and we're just on number eight, by the way, y'all. It was the local news that talked about the 10, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the two from Tucson that were killed as the SUV, they were in a cycling tournament and the SUV hit them and they lost their lives. What's scary is we've become so immune because of all the big things that when the Phoenix police identify that they found a man dead near I-17 that it almost at today's world rolls off us. Just rolls off our back. Well, it's just a guy dead on I-17. When there was a time that that would have affected us right to the core. But the callousness of the years and the callousness maybe of hurt has just kind of turned our hearts cold to that.
Or there's the final story that made Tracy's top 10 and mine, by the way, of the policeman in Phoenix who arrested a woman suspected of stabbing and killing her own mother. (laughs) What do you do in a world that seems to be spinning out of control and has gone absolutely crazy? It's gone mad. But even if we were to bring that concentric circle in and say, what about in our own lives when our own worlds begin to fall apart at the seams? And, and the reality is every person in this room has experienced that. You've experienced the sting of pain and hurt and disappointment or emotional loss or physical loss or, or you have experienced something that physically has just torn you apart. I, I've been talking about Tracy for a moment. I want to want to share one more story with you, and I can do this in public because she can't, like, come up here and slap me in front of everybody, okay? She has this weird habit. Drives me crazy. If I hand her a book and I say, Tracy, you need to read this. Great book. You're going to love it. Literally, within a couple hours of the next day, she'll come back in and she will say something like this. Hey, it looks good. Well, have you had a chance to look at it? And here's always her, this is her go-to book practice. She will read the first few pages or maybe even if she has time, the first chapter. But then she always goes to the last chapter and reads the end. And then, thank you, Dee. Dee's like, no, you don't do that. And I ask her, why do you do that? And she says, well, I'm just identifying, you know, is this a book I really want to invest in? I just got done telling you it's a book you want to invest in. Well, yeah, but I just want to see how the story starts and then how the story ends. You know, Jesus, we're going to look at that. Jesus had kind of a little bit of that same same practice. I want to read to you out of the book of Isaiah. And then we're going to, and it won't be on your screen, we're going to jump to the book of Luke. And you're going to see where Jesus kind of does that same thing. And then Brother Steve's going to come up and for an extended period of time, visit with some of our folks about how Christ gives us the ability to sustain us in the midst of hurt, but what I, the prophet Isaiah and what Jesus did was they identified that quit trying to escape from the hurt, but recognize who's there in the midst of your hurt. Isaiah in the 61st chapter, beginning with verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Now, now listen to this. I hope if you have your Bibles, you opened it and you have your big black marker or red marker out in your circling words because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to those that are captive freedom to prisoners to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to confront all who mourn. To, I'm not, not confront, I'm sorry, comfort. If you ever just said something you knew it was wrong when it came out? To comfort all who mourn. Before Steve comes, I want you to know that those by the way, are the same words that Jesus read as he began his ministry. He began his ministry, and we see in the book of Luke where Jesus walks into the temple, and they hand him, he sits down. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They were all sitting. He stood up. Now, whether he, we don't honestly know how this tradition worked, but evidently he identified himself as one, hey, I want to read today. Now, they had daily readings. Were the daily readings being practiced that day or not? We don't know. 
But ironically, if they were or if they weren't, isn't it interesting how God can always place his hand on the right thing at the right time for the right reason? He could have read any Old Testament prophecy or anything else out of the Pentateuch. But he happened to stand up at the right moment. And the senior rabbi happened to hand him probably one of the most prophetic passages in all of the Old Testament. And he happened to hand it to the only one that could make that prophetic passage take place. And he handed him that passage out of Isaiah. And Jesus stands up. And he read that passage I just read to you. And he read it, by the way, in the first person. God has called me. I want you to think about this. We're going to look at this in a few weeks. It's, it's really amazing. Think about the times when the word, Jesus, read the word, God, to those that needed to hear the word. You, you want to talk about everything coming into place for something to happen absolutely amazing? The word, who had become the word, read the word for the value of the word touching the hearers. Now again, when you look at what Jesus did in the book of Luke, he stood up, he read he shut up, then he sat down. How many of you'd love to have a preacher like that? Amen. <laughs> Might be a pretty good model. He stood up at the right time. He spoke up at the important time. Then he hands the scribe back, and he sat down at the right time. So right now, it's time for me to sit down. And it's time for my partner in crime, Steve Yarbrough, to come up. And Steve is going to interview this morning Richard and Judy Brown and Dennis and Jan Ricks. And y'all probably don't realize how much you're getting ready to be blessed, okay? Hey, and Dennis, by the way, while you guys are walking up here, the crowd is moving, the crowd is, they're all sitting still. Richard and Judy, Dennis and Jan. It feels like a public altar call right now. Dennis, by the way, so enjoyed watching the video you preached last week. Didn't he bless your hearts, amen? amen. Dennis, thank you. Y'all, I'm going to sit down and Steve, please speak up. These two couples have experienced some extraordinary challenges over the last uh, couple of years, I guess. And understand that we are asking them to share this with you. Uh, this is not something where they're saying, oh, we want to complain to the congregation. Quite the contrary. We've asked them to share uh, their experiences, their challenges, events in their lives over the last couple of years. And then we will talk about how they've dealt with those challenges. So, Judy, I'm going to ask you to go first and uh, share with the congregation what some of those challenges have been. And then I'll go to you, Jen, and then uh, Richard and Dennis can pick up uh, at that point in time. How's that? <laughs> okay, Judy. That's okay. <laughs> I think one of the big things that started it a couple years ago is um, my daughter and I were really close and we are not close anymore. And I, I was at blame as much as anything I was in blame. But at some point I just decided I needed to walk away and not make it worse. And so um, for the last couple of years, I don't have the relationship with my daughter that I really miss. Um, the next thing that came along is Richard got lung cancer. And 
the late stages. But the good thing is that God has just taken care of that, and I guess we're going to cover that later. Um, my son of uh, 57 died unexpectedly in his sleep. Three weeks later, his wife died. Um, and then just a few weeks ago, I guess it's been two months ago, a man lost his life in the back in our backyard with a car accident, came through a wall. And just recently, I've been diagnosed with cancer. I think that's about it. I think the challenge is fairly obvious, and then we'll talk about how they've dealt with it. So, Jen? I didn't know I was going to be <laughs> doing this. I thought it was going to be him. Um, uh, two years ago, you said the two-year time frame, my mother passed away. Um, she went to be with the Lord, so that's the good part. Um, I wasn't able to see her as often because they lived in Iowa, and you don't go up to Iowa in the winter time because it's cold and wintry and snowy and and uh, it wasn't always easy for us to go up there, even in the summer, but uh, we did spend some time together, and that was good. Um, I have a sister who had cancer in her leg in the same place twice. Um, she is recovering after the second time right now, slow but sure. Unfortunately, she's not a believer. But I'm not done yet. Um, and I also have a sister who has a lot of um, heart issues, and um, she is um, being diagnosed with dementia. And she's the smart one out of all five of us. She was the one that remembered everything. And so um, I'm trying to talk to her as often as I can. And again, they don't live around here. Um, let's see, our daughter passed away, it's been three and a half months now. Um, it was her heart as well as COVID and that has been very difficult because she was, had just remarried um, a year and a half ago and was happy. She had not been happy in a very long time. So. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more, but that's all that comes to mind right now. All right, now I'm going to ask uh, first Richard and then Dennis to talk to us about how you have been dealing with these challenges. Uh, what have been some things that you may have been doing as a family uh, to, to uh, address those concerns? So, Richard? Well, for me, it's it it's him. He's picked me up and kept me going. Um, <clears throat> I was blessed with having to go through radiation and chemo with no side effects, yeah. and uh, so that made it easy. So far, it's been a piece of cake. The only side effects I did have that were really strong was absolute fatigue. But I have this awesome God that whispered in my ear and said, if you make the effort, I'll give you the strength. And he has. And just to kind of cheat and borrow from the words of a song, my sails have been torn and tattered, but the anchor holds. And I'll come back in a moment and ask uh, both of you about what are some th practical things that you may be doing to deal with the challenges in your life. So, Dennis. So, I've uh, been praying a lot with Jan and, and uh, with 
I know other people have uh, been praying for us as well, and we really appreciate that. And we've just uh, put our trust in God and uh, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And as far as me, he's just given me peace. And uh, I'm gonna tell on Richard a little bit. He and I usually play golf on Fridays. And uh, so we have this kind of little relationship going with that as well. And uh, it's, it's just been good to uh, be with somebody else. Uh, he knows what he's going through and I kind of do too. And uh, he's heard some of my stories and that as well. And uh, with our wives, and everything that's been going on, but it's it's good to be with other believers, and uh, just to talk with them and and uh, just be with them. It's great. Can I say yes, ma'am. Um, this is not what I had planned at all, but it's come to mind twice, and when it does, I'm supposed to say something. Would you all do me a favor and say, Jesus? Jesus. Think about how your mouth goes. Jesus. Are you smiling when you say his name? <laughs> Jesus. That's who we lean on. He makes us smile. Very good. I'd made a list of some things, and you've touched on... You've talked about prayer. You've talked about fellowship that you've engaged in. Um, a couple of other things. Oh, well, let me give you an opportunity now that you're thinking about that. What are some other things that you may be doing to deal with these challenges in your life? Any other things come to mind? Bible. Ah, yeah, that's what I was looking for, Bible study. Um, engaging in that. Uh, any others? I like, to, oh. I like to sing, but I've been having some issues with my lungs, and so um, I'm seeing a doctor again tomorrow. Um, but And so I want to sing in the choir again, and I'm blessed that she lets me come and listen and, and sing for hopefully Easter, but um, so in the joy of the Lord is my strength. That's my favorite verse. Uh, we find, or I do at least, uh, praying for other people just helps as well. And so the Monday morning prayer group in the church office is uh, real encouraging and we hear uh, praise reports and, and lift up our prayers to other people that need them. And so uh, I invite you to join us there on Monday mornings at 9.30 as well. Yes, ma'am. One of the things I have found for years is you never have to look far to find somebody a whole lot worse off than you are. <laughs> and that helps <laughs> weird. <laughs> It truly does. Uh, you've mentioned music, and I know a lot of you probably listen to uh, Christian music a lot, and hopefully it ministers to you in one fashion or another. Uh, I made a couple of other notes here. I wrote down books and movies, i.e. Christian books and Christian movies. Can any of you suggest or have you suggested to other people uh, any particular books in the last year or two uh, that you either ministered to you or you thought might minister to someone else? Just recently, I was given the book about angels and Sister Teresa and a couple other books that I, it's not that I don't like to read, I just don't make time to read, but I've just learned that angels are all around us and that's something that we can use to defeat the devil with. 
Any other recommended books? Well, that's all right. That that has a, a role. What about uh, have have you seen any Christian movies that ministered to you uh, in in the last couple of years? No. Okay. Well, I'll recommend one you might want to consider. I don't know. It's probably now on Netflix or whatever. But uh, Redeeming Love, uh, quite remarkable. One that that I would recommend. So. Ah, Blindside, yes. A lot of you probably familiar with the, that movie, at least, and maybe uh, more, than, more than that. St. Patrick. Okay. All right, so we've talked about as ways to deal with these challenges that I think we would all admit have been really, really incredible that, that these two couples have dealt with in the last two years, but we've talked about prayer, talked about Bible study, We've talked about fellowship with other believers. Uh, interesting. No, nobody said uh, gathering together collectively, but I suspect that was obvious. Yeah, sort of a giving, a given. And then uh, uh, possibly uh, Christian books, movies, and uh, music. So if you wanted to encourage this congregation uh, as far as their dealing with the challenges in their lives, would you have a, a parting word of advice uh, that you might want to give to them? I've got a big one. God's brought me through a lot of stuff, and I'm sure they have every one of you. But hang on to that faith. There isn't anything that the devil can throw at you that he doesn't have an answer for. Just hang on to your faith. Just hang on. Richard, Jen, Dennis, a parting word of counsel to these people who you love and who love you? I see Richard. Yes. Find some way to do a daily devotion, either uh, through a book or pick a Sunday Christian program that, speaker that you enjoy and just set it to be recorded and download and make it a habit to watch that every day. Spend time together with, a, with your wife during this. Great advice, Richard. Jan? I listen to a lot of uh, Christian music and the words are so powerful and you sing along and um, even though the words may be tough, um, there's always a good ending and, you know, <laughs> who else do we have as an ending is our Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, we are so blessed. We are so blessed by, by each of you here. You have really touched our lives more than you will ever know. All right. Thank you very much for sharing these uh, personal experiences and how you've dealt with them. And we, we frankly admire all four of you very, very much. So thank you. Do we have that third verse up there? Would you please? To really encapsulate what has been said today and kind of to pull my par Har Paul Harvey, the end of the story is in verse 3 of Isaiah 61. To grant those who mourn in Zion giving them garland instead of ashes, oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the spirit of fainting, so that they will be called, check this out now, the oaks of righteousness, the planting 
of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. He gives beauty for ashes, strength for fear, gladness for mourning, peace for despair. When sorrow seems to surround you, when suffering heavy on your head know that tomorrow brings wholeness and healing God knows your need just believe what he said he gives beauty for ashes strength for fear gladness for mourning peace for despair he gives beauty for strength for fear gladness for mourning peace for despair when what you've done keeps you from moving on when fear wants to make itself at home in your heart know that forgiveness brings wholeness and healing God knows your just believe what he said he gives beauty for ashes strength for fear gladness for mourning peace for despair he gives beauty for ashes strength for fear gladness for mourning peace for despair I once was lost, but God has found me. Though I was bound, I've been set free. I've been made righteous in his sight. A display of his splendor all can see. I once was lost, but God has found me. Though I was bound, I've been set free. I've been made righteous in his sight. A display of his splendor all can see. He gives beauty for ashes strength for fear gladness for mourning peace for despair he gives beauty for ashes strength for fear gladness for mourning peace for despair peace for despair peace for despair he gives peace for Despair. Isn't that what you seek when life is, seems to be in a tailspin, when, when you just can't make sense of it all? Isn't that what we speak or seek, perfect peace? And, and we've talked about it today, y'all. The only one that offers perfect peace is God. In no way, shape, or form do any of us in this room pretend to understand the trials and the fears and the tribulations that you're going through right now, or even on a scarier thought, may go through this next week. But God can take ashes and turn them into something absolutely beautiful. Yesterday during Jerry Sandvig's message, I was carrying, and I... I, this was not intentional, but I picked up a beautiful flower arrangement and I picked up the ashes of Jerry. And I thought, what a picture. What a picture that life, our bodies, they can be reduced to this. But this is what they represent. You, my friend, are a glorious bouquet that God's placed on this earth. Go out into the world today and this week, and would you just shine for God? Be the bouquet that God has intended you to be, and recognize this. You can represent unbelievable, perfect, 
perfect peace. The choir's going to come. We're going to close with a song. I do have, have a great uh, closing comment to make. I was so excited. This week, on Tuesday, I was driving down the road, and if you look, you can see on my notepad that I said, call Charlie. Now, the reason I needed to call Charlie was I wanted to talk about baptism. Charlie had given his heart to Christ. We've not followed through with that. And, uh, and I wrote down, call Charlie. Well, I'm driving down the road this morning, and Charlie's sitting in the back of the golf cart. His dad's chauffeuring him around. I want to get that gig, by the way. I want to figure out how I can do that. Anyway, the, I'm welcome in the back of the golf cart anytime. There you go. Well, I thought when I passed, I've got to grab Charlie. Well, when I got out of my truck, Charlie was standing right there. And he said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. And I said, well, I need to talk to you. And he said, Pastor, can we please schedule my baptism? Isn't that great? So we are going to be working with the country club on May, for May 19th. It's a Saturday. May 28th. I knew that. May 28th across, across the street. It's a Saturday. And uh, we'll try to figure out a way to throw fellowship in that. But mark your calendars. You don't want to miss it. It's a special gift, uh, not only between commitment between he and God, but a gift to his mom. And so that'll be a fun day. God's going to give you perfect peace. All you got to do is let go and hold on to God. Man, you glad you came to church this morning? It's good to have you here this morning. I want to invite you. We have fellowship time next door. Don't forget to come by and say hello. Grab somebody you have not talked to in a while. Take them with you over there, all right? And then if you're feeling really like you want to bless them, take them to lunch, all right? Do that. Thank you so much for being here. Prayer time tomorrow morning at 930. Don't forget Wednesday night we have dinner uh, we have pizza and we have Bible study at 5.30. Did I get that time right? Mm -hmm. I always struggle with Wednesday nights. Butch is back there. Go, Pastor, go. You're right. Thank you so much for being here. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a great week. God bless you. You're dismissed.